So we've in the previous video, we worked out the variance covariance matrix using a framework suggested by Simon Beninga. We worked out, so we took the daily data, uh, which we downloaded from John C. Hull's uh, webpage. We obtained returns on the four indices. We worked out the excess returns by subtracting each daily return from the average. So each day's return is subtracted from the average return. And then using a matrix operation, we transpose the excess returns and multiply by the same uh, matrix. And we divide by the number of observations for each uh, series of data. And we obtain results that correspond to John C. Hull's variance covariance matrix. So he worked out the variance and the covariance of each of the indices independently of each other. And in this instance, we do it using the matrix. Okay, from the so the results are the same. Uh, if we look at these results and just take them as a set of numbers, and then, um, okay, you can see the results are the same. So if we go back one, Okay, this results corresponds here. This covariance between the Cat Courant and the Dow Jones. Think about that for a second. Copy, transpose, a special transpose. Okay, so if we take this, the variance covariance between the FTSE 100 and Dow Jones is the same as here. Likewise, this results same as here, same as here. Okay, so that's a variance covariance matrix. Okay, how do we go from the variance covariance to estimating a value at risk? Well, we need to obtain alpha values. So, um, okay, so to get the to go to the value at risk, we need to have alphas. What are the alphas? For the alphas, represent, uh, if you like, the amount invested in each asset. So the portfolio consists of four million dollars invested in Dow Jones Industrial Average, three million invested in the FTSE 100, one million dollars invested in the CAC 40, and two million dollars invested in the Nikkei 225. Okay, so uh, to get the portfolio variance, we can also follow the Beninga example. Um, so the portfolio variance, we could look, take this uh, representation here of the portfolio variance and observe that the portfolio uh, variance is the weights times the variance covariance matrix times the weight. So we transpose the weights. In this instance, they're not going to be. So if we, okay, let's go back and copy just to make, to compare like against like. Okay, paste. In this instance, we're not going to go with actual weights, although we have it written here as weights. In this instance, we're going to take the cash amounts. So if we like, the portfolio variance here is the transpose of the weights. So the alphas, we're going to take alphas, multiplied by the green, the variance covariance, times the alphas again. So that gives us, as a cash amount, the portfolio variance. So because these were represent, these are given in thousands, this sum here is 8,761,833. Uh, and it's a dollar amount. The portfolio standard deviation is we just take the square root. To get the uh, value at risk, we take the daily um, we take the, the daily standard deviation and multiply by uh, 2.33. So we've seen that before. 
So we've seen this before. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this value here, the 2.33 is the norm's inverse. And um, we're going to take, um, so we take, let's paste. And um, let's redimension this. Okay, so we're going to assume that the expected change in the value of the portfolio is zero. So we're assuming that uh, in this example that the value of the portfolio doesn't grow. That might be okay for short time periods. And uh, broadly speaking here, the average uh, growth, if you like, or the average return is close to zero. So we're going to assume that in this example. Okay. And we assume that the change in the value of the portfolio is adheres to a normal distribution. And since the norm's inverse, if you like, the the and the inverse here of the normal cumulative probability function for at the one percent level is uh, two point three three. So if we specify one percent, so we're looking at the one percent tail. How many standard deviations is the return of zero from the um one percent tail it's two point three three standard deviations then to estimate the value at risk for one day we take the standard deviation of the portfolio we multiply it by the inverse of the cumulative normal um, probability which is two point three three we have a value of uh, 217.75 and that's equivalent to 217,775 so what we can say is uh, the variance covariance matrix matrix gives us a variance of losses portfolio losses of 8,761,800 uh, 33 approximately the standard deviation is the square root this that's the 9360 um, and then to express the 99% uh, value at risk for one day we take the product of those two and that gives us a value of 217 or in dollar terms it's 217,757 and that's our one day value at risk again we've assumed in this example which is generally not going to be the case but our a uh, that the expected change in the value of the portfolio is zero and uh, later on using a an approach outlined by Beninga, we make explicit how this can be non-zero. But for our purposes here, assuming that the re mean return is on average zero, then the value at risk is 217,775. Okay, so, so that's only likely to occur, this zero growth is only likely uh, to be valid for very very short time period so here if we look at the periodicity it's daily changes the return very very small uh, both negatives and positives on average to return uh, very very small so approximately zero and so for this example here assuming a mean return of zero is not um, overly generalist or grotesque. Okay, leave it there.